today about the forges that I use when I do my forging process. Basically, both of these forges are built exactly alike, just basically differences in the size and a little bit of a difference in the chambers. So I'll start with this larger forge here. It's a 29 inches long, about 17 and a half inches tall, and about 16 and a half inches wide. The interior chamber runs all the way through the back end. Uh, it's eight inches wide and about eight, eight and a half inches tall, and it's domed. Uh, it's lined with fire brick uh, here on the bottom and on top. So as that wears out, um, you know, I can replace that without deforming the refractory. It's surrounded by cable insulation on the inside, and it has about uh, two and a half, to I can't remember if it's two and a half or three inches. Uh, it's three inches of cable and about two inches of refractory uh, poured in. Um, they both have sliding doors that are on rollers so that I can easily open and close. I've got dual handles on here because it makes it easier to, to open and close uh, while I'm working. And they're both running, you know, basically built the same way. These are both uh, forced air uh, with ribbon burners that I built myself. So everything you see in the design I, I built, uh, custom design and built. Looking at the smaller forge, it's uh, 17 inches long and it's 12 by 12 and the chamber on it is six by six. And, I, and again, I've got refractory um, soft brick in the bottom uh, so that it will allow me to also to change that out. Now this one I just recently relined and redid so that's why you don't see any burn in there uh, coming, off of the, uh, coming off of the forging process. Um, they both, as I said, run forced air. If I move the camera around, we can kind of see the air setup and the valve setup. So I've got the, the fans tied into inch and a half black pot. I've got a stainless steel needle valve here for controlling the, the propane volume. Then an on off valve for the propane itself. And if we look at the back, both forges are designed so that the back comes off and I'll show a photo of that here in a minute or show you with that off. But I also have the capability in the back without taking the entire back off to open the chamber. I can also pull out this plug and allow for stock. Let me move the camera here, allow for stock uh, to be pushed through all the way through if necessary. And it's the same concept on both forges. I have supports built here to help support the fans and the, and the popping so we don't put unnecessary strain on the ribbon burner and those are also screwed down in place. Same thing here on the larger forge. And they run pretty hot. I've had this one up, the big one up, over 2,400 degrees. I've also had the small forge up over 2,400 as well. Obviously, the small one heats up quicker. It takes about 15 minutes to get up to heat. The larger one takes about 20, 25 minutes to get up to heat. Um, I did not put a... Uh, airflow valve on this one. I just run the fan straight out and I control the temperature with the propane. On the larger one, I do have a valve. I do have a hand valve on it, a gate valve to control airflow. But I've really found that I don't ever use that. I'm, I'm able to control the temperature just by adjusting the propane itself. So more propane, obviously the hotter it gets less propane, you know, the lower, lower it burns and the lower the temperature. So that's pretty much it. Again, I, I built both of these from scratch. These are my own design and I've had a lot of good luck building blades with these guys. Um, they should serve me for years to come.
So here I'm getting ready to start up the big forge. Um, I'm just gonna start it up, let it run for a minute, let it start to heat up. But basically I run my regulator anywhere from four to five PSI on the big one. Uh, now again, I've got the needle valve turned down to probably two to three pounds on the actual pressure coming out. Uh, so it's not running a full on five PSI. So the startup process, Basically all we got to do is turn the fan on and I have a switch, you know, I've got a cord that has an inline switch to help me turn those off and on, make that easier. I've already got the gas hooked up and I got the regulator on the back set to, PS, to 5 PSI. So I'm going to fire this one up and then in a few minutes I'll fire the other one up and let you see it as well. So I'm going to turn the fan on, turn the gas and then light it. It's lit. It'll start heating up. Like I said, it'll take about oh, 20, 25 minutes to get up the forge welding temperature because of the volume and the mass of the forge itself. But once it gets up to heat, uh, you know, I can actually back the gas pressure down a little bit and maintain uh, that forge welding temperature of around 22 to 2300 degrees is normally what I run it at. And again, depending on what kind of steel I'm using and what it needs for forging. So I'll close the door on it and uh, let it start heating up. We'll check back on it in a few minutes. All right, the forge has been running about less than 10 minutes and it's, and it's heating up. One thing I wanted to point out is that when I'm heating up the forge to get it up to forge welding temperature, I usually cover the front opening with these fire bricks uh, just to close that off. That makes an easy way to open and close the chamber and retain the heat and also to help control the temperature. Uh, so basically what I do is I will uh, put on a pair of high temperature gloves, reach up and just pull that fire brick off and I'll show you that in just a second. So one thing I want to point out is you can notice how quiet this forge is. Now when I open the or pull the fire brick off, you're going to hear uh, probably some whooshing sounds of the, because of the pressure inside coming out until that stabilizes. But uh, typically what I do to check temperature uh, as it's coming up, I'll just pull the fire brick off, I'll open the chamber door a little bit, and then I have an infrared thermometer I'll put in there to check temperature to see where it's at on the heat up. Now again, this is probably not up to temperature yet. It's only been running for a few minutes. I'm gonna pull the fire brick off. You can hear the whine I was talking about. The pressure stabilizes. And I'll open up the door. And as you can see, it's starting come up to temperature. I'll grab my infrared and I'll check and see what that temperature is, see where we're at. One thing I wanted to point out is how quiet this forge is. So I've got the fan running, you know, it's a single speed fan. It push, it's a Dayton fan and it pushes 273 CFM. Um, so I've got it running with the valve wide open and again I'm regulating the temperature with with the uh, needle valve up here and I had the front end closed off but this is running wide open still heating up and you can see how quiet the unit is running on the smaller unit here you can see I've got a smaller Dayton blower I believe this blower is a, it's 125 volt and I believe it's somewhere around 100 CFM so it's roughly half the size or a little bit less than half the size of the larger blower that I have on the other forge. All right, I'm getting ready to check the, uh, the temperature and see where it's at. It's been running, oh, 10, 12 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. I haven't been keeping track. I know it's starting to get close because you can see there's some flames starting to shoot out around the front door here. It's not perfectly sealed off. You need to have some allowance for air or heat to get out to keep the combustion going. So I'm gonna pull the front cover off of 
front fire brick off and then open the door and we'll take a temperature reading. sound you'll hear uh, will, dis will disappear. Actually, the hotter these things get, the more efficient they burn the propane. So I've got the propane the needle valve adjusted where I normally run it. So until it gets full up the temperature, you're going to hear a little bit of that whooshing sound until it gets up to a clean burn. I've opened the door, we're already up to 2,085 degrees, so it's still climbing. Okay, while the other forge is heating up, I'll show you real quickly how easy it is to pull the back doors off of these. Again, just pull the plug out. You can do this with it running if you're wearing, you know, the appropriate heavy-duty gloves. Uh, unloosen. Untighten the set screw on top, and then you just pick it up and just slide it out and pull it off. And there you can see you have a totally open chamber if you want to use it that way. Or again, if you have long stock, let me put this back. If you have long stock, you have an opening through the back where you can pass your stock all the way through. You know, if you're doing something, you know, something long. And again, it works the same way on the larger forge here as well. Now, one thing I was thinking about doing, which I haven't done yet, similar to the handles on the front, I was thinking about welding on an extended bar and putting on an extended handle here. So in case you decided while you're in the middle of forging, you want to pull this off and it's hot, you can still reach up unloosen your, bo your bolt here, your set screw, grab it by the handle and pick it up and move it off. And that's another idea I've had, but I just haven't had a chance to modify both of these yet. Okay, we're, we're up to 2246 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it's still slowly climbing. We, uh, I've been heating this for about heating the forge up for about 20, 25 minutes, so it's getting the forge welding temperatures now. I suspect it'll climb another 100 degrees or so in the next 10 or 15 minutes. But at this point, that's hot enough that I could, you know, for a small billet, I can start forging. Okay, it's been a few more minutes, and we're up to 2,000, uh, 2,318, 2,318 degrees Fahrenheit. It'll probably level off somewhere around 2320, 2340, somewhere in there, unless I adjust uh, more gas to bring the temperature up. But that's perfect for forge welding. All right, I'm gonna shut this forge off and I'll switch to the smaller one. Uh, I won't show the, the lighting process. It's the same as the big, big one here. Uh, and I'll get it up to temperature and we'll get a, uh, a reading off of it. Okay, I'm going to light the small forge now. So again, we just turn the uh, fan on.
Okay, right now it's 2,378 degrees and still climbing. It's been heating up for 15 to 20 minutes. So you can see the small one gets up to temperature much quicker. Now the bigger one will also get up to 2,400 plus. It just takes it longer. So as you can see, this, this particular small forge, because of less mass and volume, it's getting up to temperature a lot quicker. As you can see, we're at 2,429 degrees. We're getting on the verge of being too hot. So if I was actually forging right now, I would probably turn the gas down and level that out around 2,300 degrees. If you're gonna do a lot of forging, you really need one of these infrared thermometers to help you accurately gauge your temperature. Or that, or put a thermocouple thermometer into your forge. And we're still climbing, 24.43. All right, as you can see, this forge is up to forge welding temperature. It's over 2,400 degrees right now. Uh, it's actually a little too hot. You can actually burn your steel, drive the carbon out of your steel by getting it too hot. So depending on what kind of metal you're using, you want to regulate uh, the temperature in your forge. So another thing I wanted to mention, for both of these forges, after I poured the refractory and cured it and fired it, I also lined the forges with a ceramic coating to help reflect heat back inside to help with the warm up time. That improved the warm up time quite a bit for both of these, and it also increased the temperature, probably an average of 100 to 150 degrees. One last thing I wanted to mention for both of these forges, you'll notice I have them on this cart that I built. I built the cart high enough so that I wouldn't have to bend over and look into the forge to, that, to be able to check on my billets. Um, I built the cart large enough to accommodate both of these. It's on rollers. As you can see in the background, I'm working out of a three car garage and I need to be able to push this forge around uh, or these forges around on a cart to move them around as needed and to store things away so that I can still get both of my vehicles in this garage. So everything designed, as you can see behind you, everything's on a cart and everything's designed to be mobile so I can move it around. Since I'm working out of this, you know, from my home out of the garage, I need to have that flexibility. So if you have any questions about the design of these forges, uh, put it in the comments and I'll try to answer any questions you have. Thanks a lot for watching.